Being a baby is a bit like being a scientist. They're, they're just trying to discover you know, new things about their world around them. At University of London's Birkbeck Baby Lab, blue-haired psychologist Dr. Caspar Adiman is trying to figure out what makes babies tick. We cover almost everything that's relevant to the first few years of life. So that might be learning a language, learning civic things about your cultural environment. That includes wiring infants up to EEG hairnets. We're measuring her, the naturally occurring electrical activity of the brain with this sensor cap that has 128 sensors all sewn together. Most of the trends in baby research are to do with the technology that becomes available. Um, each time a new piece of technology turns up, it makes a big difference. Today, he's using a variety of technology on new recruits. She's had a nap. She's, yes, uh... she has, yeah. This is Greta Zanata. This is my daughter, Olive Yamaguchi Crawley, who is 14 months. My main research project is called the Infant Time Machine. We think that if we can set up an experiment where the baby's actively doing something, then timing's going to be more important than there, and we should perhaps see some you know, clearer signals that okay, you know, yeah. babies really do have a sense of time. Our sense of time helps us structure the world around us, so it helps us plan where we're moving from one place to another. There are several different competing theories of how the brain measures time, but a lot of them have this clock somewhere ticking away in your head. Well, is that clock innate? Is, there, is the timing mechanism built in from day one? Or is your sense of time something that you acquire? Seems like we're, we're ready already. <laughs> He first tests the baby's sense of time with an animation of a bear popping up every four seconds in the same location seven times in a row. And then on the eighth time, instead of popping up, the cartoon character stays hidden. And we're interested in whether the babies will look to the correct place at the right, correct time. Using eye tracking technology, Caspar can identify where the baby is looking. This is the point where we're interested. Where will the baby look? Surprisingly, most of his subjects aren't anticipating where the bear should be. So they're looking all over the screen at that point when we as adults expect that thing is popping back. So it seems as if the babies have no sense of time at all. But that's not the whole story. The eye tracking software also measures changes in pupil size. The wider, the more engaged. In all the ages, the pupils get wider at precisely that moment when the character is supposed to appear. At some level, the babies have an awareness of the timing of this task, but they're not genuinely engaged with it. Part of the reason for like this might be that it is a, just a, a screen that you, you're not interacting with. Your ability to judge the time really matters a lot more when you're in a physical situation. That leads us to experiment number two. Four motion capture cameras track the baby's arm movements. That tracks the, the gross movement, but we're also interested in is there any tensing or preparation for the movement. To be able to track that, we use something called EMG, which is just a very sensitive voltmeter that um, sits on the skin and can detect the signal from, from the muscle. So that can tell us if the muscle is just preparing to move. We can also use the same system to record the heart rate of the baby, and we'll see if that changes as a measure of surprise. An assistant sits opposite the baby and every three to four seconds makes a sound and lifts their arms seven times in a row. On the eighth time, she remains still and they look for any reaction. This is where the, the movement would, would expect, be expecting to happen, um, this, this sort of, this peak here. There was quite a noticeable difference in the two ages. The eight-month-old sat there quite passively, whereas the 14-month-old very quickly latched on to the fact this was a game and was waving her arms around like crazy. Early results appear to show that physical activity and human interaction are much more compelling than television screens. When you're a four-month-old baby, you're just sitting in one spot. You don't move around. You don't have much control over the world and the, uh, the timing of the world. As you start to move more and more, the world changes and your ability and your need to interact with it over time develops and changes. And so your sense of time should develop. Thanks to new technology and brave young scientists, work at the Birkbeck Baby Lab will continue to unlock these bundles of mystery. People are now seeing that 
Um, infancy is a real window into adulthood. This is the beginning of a very long process and you know, it's important to understand where you start from.